Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So what must I do to experience the fellowship of the saints? Having said all this about the church, what must I do to experience the fellowship of the saints? I said the fellowship of the saints is a biblically prescribed community life of believers. The experience of such, how believers dwell together as prescribed by scripture, that experience is what we call the fellowship of the saints. So what, do I, what must I do to experience the fellowship of the saints? Number one, you must be born again. Are you tired of writing? The house of God is the pillar of truth, isn't it? The house of God, the church of God is a place of light and understanding. It's a place where you come and learn in truth, where you are matured. So we are all students of the word. To experience the fellowship of the saints, number one, you must be born again. You must be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Having confessed the Lord Jesus Christ and believed in your heart that God raised him up from the dead for your sake. When you have done that, you have been saved and you are declared born again. You are now born of the Spirit of Christ Jesus. Number two, what must I do to experience the fellowship of the saints? Number two, you must be totally submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be totally submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just calling the name of Jesus alone is not enough. Your life must show. Your life must be a proof and a validation of the fact that you are submitted to the authority, the government of Jesus Christ. Number three, you must recognize and submit to the church as God's order. You must recognize and submit to the church I'll take it slowly so we can all follow. You must recognize and submit to the church as God's order. As God's order for kingdom community living. You must recognize and submit to the church as God's order for kingdom community living. The church is God's perfect and prescribed order for how believers are meant to live together, how they are meant to coexist and order their manner of life. You must recognize and submit. And when that happens, it means that you must be part of at least a regular local assembly. You know, there are four dimensions that the scripture of which the scripture gives us concerning the church four dimensions that reveals how the church is this you don't need to write this just listen to this there are four dimensions by which the church is viewed first of all the church is viewed as an eternal entity because we all carry the life of god in us and the life of god is what is eternal life isn't it first john 5 verse 11 he said for this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son. In verse 12 we say, For he that had the Son had life. So the church is first of all viewed as an eternal entity. We all carry the life of God. The eternal life of God. Next, the church is viewed as a universal entity. Speaks of the church of God that is in heaven and on earth. You will find that in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 14 down. Paul says, I bow my knees to the Father of the church which is in heaven and on earth. So it is one but in two dimensions. To us here on earth and to the saints that are already in glory. In Hebrews where we read, the Bible says to the saints, the spirits of just men that have been made perfect. Thirdly, the church is viewed as a global entity. Everybody say global entity. It talks about the gathering of believers across nations. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your stature. It doesn't matter your social stratification. As long as all of us together across the nations of the earth call on the name Jesus Christ. This is the church. And then the fourth view of the church is the territorial church. 
This is where you now have a local assembly within a particular location or a network of believers, a network of Christians in a particular place. You must identify with and belong to all of these categories. That's what we mean when we say recognizing and submitting to the church as God's order for kingdom community living. And then number four, to experience the fellowship of the saints, number four, you must partake in regular meetings for the purpose of mutual fellowship and edification. You must partake in regular meetings for the purpose of mutual fellowship and edification. You must be born again. You must come under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You must recognize and submit to the church as God's order for kingdom community living. And then you don't stop there. You yourself must identify with and belong to and attend regular meetings. Are we together here? Please look up. Let me talk up. Let me stress on that point a little bit. There are a lot of believers who will stop at number three. Yes, they are born again. Yes, Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Yes, they recognize that there is an entity that God has placed on earth called the church. But they stop there. There are a lot of believers that don't, don't agree with corporate gathering of believers or saints in a place. It is wrong. In order for you to experience all that comes with the fellowship of the saints, you must regularly attend meetings. There is something you cannot gain if you stay at home. It is okay if the person cannot come to church or come for Sunday service or any service whatsoever. And I hope you know that this service, you see that's why we call it service. It is a place first of all where, God, where your life is serviced. There is such a thing as a corporate anointing that you can't find at home. It is okay if the person doesn't have transport money to come to church. And that's why we do our best as a ministry to ensure that people gather from across this city by any means whatsoever. It is okay if the person is at the place of work while service is going on and probably you are following and listening online. No problem. We understand that hindrance. But that you are at home right now, you are in Beduguri and you are following online. No. You are not recognizing and identifying with what we call the fellowship of the saints. 